And finally tonight, the saying goes, money makes the world go round. In New York State, Comptroller Tom DiNapoli's job is to make sure that all of the money in New York State is spent properly. DiNapoli has held the position for the past decade overseeing state finances and auditing state departments. Kyle Stewart sat down with DiNapoli to discuss everything from corruption in the Capitol to a possible constitutional convention. Here's that report. Well, Mr. Napoli, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have our matching ties on. Yeah, I got the good, Ithaca yeah. College colors, so there we, we did it right. Yeah. All right, so the, the latest labor force numbers came out for New York State early September, and they showed that there is uh, declining unemployment across the state, but specifically in upstate New York, southern tier, uh, that's not translating to higher employment. So can you kind of explain that, walk us through that? Why yeah, I mean, happening? yeah, it's a challenge. So we've got yeah. we've got more folks working than, than than we've had since you know 08 when the recession really hit. But uh, in five of the ten geographic regions of the state, as you accurately point out, including the southern tier, you know where we are, uh, while the unemployment rate has gone down, so have the number of jobs. People that have uh, uh, left the area, you know, many communities have declining population, or people have left the workforce for various reasons. So. You know, that is a concern. It's great that the unemployment uh, rate has improved, but uh, in terms of, of total jobs, we have many communities where there are fewer people working. And so what do you think can be done for job creation? You know, I think one of the good things the state has underway is, is a um, regionalized approach to economic development. But we have to be honest that, that you know, some of what we've done has not been adequate. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think there are a couple of reasons for it. I think part of it is we need to do a better job of evaluating what is the return on the money that we're putting into some of these uh, programs? Hey, the overall story in New York is a good one, but so much of the job recreation in New York has really come out of New York City and to an extent Long Island and the downstate suburbs. So uh, we don't want to leave any region uh, behind. Uh, so there's still more work for us to do in this area. Uh, since 2000, more than 30 uh, New York State legislators have been forced out of office due to corruption or misconduct. Uh, why is corruption such a rampant problem in, the, in Albany, and how do we go about solving yeah, that, I mean, that issue? Yeah, I mean, Kyle, it's an important question. I'm asked, um, asked it all the time. Is it, is it happening more today than it, than it happened before? Or is it that we're more vigilant than we were before? I, I don't know that I have a clear answer on that. I mean, I think there are a couple things we need to do. First of all, we need um, people to look a little more carefully before they vote for people for these offices at the front end. Mm -hmm. We need more competition in our electoral system. There's too much money, private money, private donations. I'm a strong believer in public financing of elections, including for a state legislature. Uh, that's part of it. I think more vigilance from offices like ours in the controller's office. You know, we've stepped up our investigative work. We've added staff to that function because we know people think they can get away with it. Our message is you can't get away with it. Eventually you're going to get caught. Mm. And so some of the things you just mentioned actually, the campaign finance, yep. uh, reform, uh, more competitive elections, some of those are the reasons people want to see a constitutional convention yeah. uh, and that's on the ballot in this November. You've come out against that. Can you kind of explain why you're against it and why you think those people who say you could go about doing those things through a convention are, are incorrect? Yeah. You know, to my friends who are progressive and want to see changes and they're frustrated that changes don't happen, you know, I understand that that uh, option of the Constitutional Convention suggests that maybe we can make things better that way. But I'm against it because I, I also think things can be made worse. Mm -hmm. And I think there are many important protections in the Constitution now that I don't want to see uh, thrown out. So if we vote for the convention, then next year we have to elect delegates. Mm -hmm. Well, the same issue of, of private money influencing elections you could be sure when people are running for delegate, special interest money is really going to be poured into New York. And people have all kinds of agenda. If I knew who the delegates were going to be and they were all going to be progressive thinkers that want campaign finance reform, I could say, okay, let's take a chance. Conservatively, it would probably cost about $50 million to have a convention. I, I'd rather spend the money on programs that help people than, than, than going through this process. And so I know you've been asked this question before. Um, so you ran for lieutenant governor in 2006 before Elliot Spitzer eventually chose David Patterson. Do you have your sights set on a higher office at some point in your career? <laughs> well, I'm always flattered when someone asks that. Um, but I, I've said many times, and I mean it, I think I've got the best job in state government right now. And I feel, you know, it's a real privilege to be state controller. So, you know, the next election is 2018, and, and my expectation is that uh, the governor's running again, the attorney general's running again, I'll be running again. 
Um, and uh, my goal with the short run is to continue to be state control of no, no goal beyond that.